Hi and welcome to another math lesson. Okay, this time um, we looked at getting a formula for my present value. This time let's look at a formula for my interest, or actually just solving interest. The, um, so, for example, me, most of us have absolutely no idea what is the interest that we earn at our, in, in, on our bank account. So, okay, so imagine you have a, a small savings account that you started um, when you were younger. And it's been five years, you originally, someone gave you 50,000 rand. You have a very, uh, very kind uh, uncle or something, and they gave you 50,000 rand five years ago. And currently, your, after five years, that 50,000 has grown to 60,000 rand. And all you know is that you get a monthly interest. You see every month there's some ad interest added to your account, so you know you get monthly interest. <coughs> Which means your interest was compounded monthly. And the question might now be, is what is your annual interest? What is the interest that they are quoting you per annum? Okay, well, before we get into this, let's just quickly remind ourselves of uh, something that we learned a little bit earlier this, this year. And that is that whenever I have a root, so for example, the fourth root of x to the power 16, then what that root would do is divide my exponent. So this could be simplified by saying 16 divided by 4 in the exponent. And this then simply, the answer would be x to the power of 4. Now why is that important? Well, we'll look at how it's applied in this context just in a, in a minute. But let's say I have x to the power of, uh, let's say, 20 is equal to uh, 90145. Who knows? Okay. And if I wanted to calculate, then what is the value of x? It means I want x, x, a, the exponent of x to be 1. And what can I do to get the exponent of x to be 1? Well, I see I want to divide the exponent. So I want to take a root to the 20th power on both sides. A root to the 20th power on both sides. What I do on the left hand side, I do on the right hand side. Okay, to keep the balance. Which means the 20 divided by the 20 will give me an exponent of 1. And on this side, we can use our calculator. Okay. Now, for me, I... Oh, I actually do have one. Okay, so I'm going to say 90145. I'm going to take this root. Actually, I think I should type it differently. In this one, I take the 20th y root of 90145. I doubt that's correct. Let's take it the other way around. I don't know how this calculator works. 90145, the y root, oh, the y root to the 20. Now oh, that looks more like it. Okay. 1,76. So one comma seven six nine, which if I understand correctly, or that is correct, it means that to the power of twenty should give me nine zero one point five. There we go, nine zero one point five. That seems correct. And there I've solved what x must be if x to the power of twenty gives me nine zero one point five. Okay, how am I going to use this? 
to solve this type of question? Well, let's look at the example that I gave now earlier. 50,000 invested for five years grows to 60,000 and I know my monthly interest. What is my monthly interest? I'm, I'm getting the monthly interest. So in other words, I know it is compounded interest monthly. Yeah, most banks work on compound interest. Sorry, I didn't state it. Here's my formula. I know my future value. It's already 60,000. My future value is 60,000. My present value, or principal value actually, principal value is 50,000. My interest is unknown. I don't know what my interest is, but my time period is, and uh, sorry, I keep referring to this time period. This is not time period. The number of times I get interest. How many times do I get interest? Well, I get 12 times a year for five years, which means I get it for 60 times. I get it 60 times. So all of this in the, in the equation will give me 60,000. <laughs> so 60,000 is equal to 50,000. One plus i, which I don't know, to the power of sixty. So I have five thousand fifty thousand. If I divide both sides with the fifty, with the fifty. So what I'm trying to do is get i on its own. I'm I'm trying to get i on its own. To do that, we do bot minus backwards. Bot minus backwards. So, are we subtracting anything? Remember, the very last thing I'm allowed to do is the bracket. So, I can't touch the inside of the bracket yet. Okay? So, the very last thing I'm allowed to do is touch the inside of the bracket. But for now, am I subtracting anything outside of the bracket? No, I'm not. Am I adding something outside of the bracket? No, I'm not. Am I multiplying something outside of the bracket? Yes. I'm multiplying with 50,000. Now, to get a y on its own, we must get rid of that multiplying by 50. And the opposite of that, or to get it equal to 1, is we need to divide. Just on both sides, remember to always keep the balance in. Whatever maths you do, always keep the balance. So there we go. We cancel the 50s. So let's keep it as 6. And that is side we're left with 1 plus i to the power of 60. The next question, am I dividing anything? No, I'm not. And O represents a power of or square root of. And I see, ooh, I've got a power of 60. So to get rid of that exponent, I need to divide the exponent with 60. And how do I divide exponents? I take roots. I take root, so I take the 60th root on both sides, the 60th root on both sides. And then I get that 1 plus i is equal to the 60th root of 6. Well, I suppose we can just simplify that fraction on the inside, but I'm going to keep it like that just to, to show you where I got the formula from later. By no means do I want you to remember that formula because you can always derive it, but we'll get to that in a moment. Now I've got rid of the bracket. The bracket was there because we have an exponent of 60 for the whole bracket and a 50,000 that was multiplying that whole business. Okay? But since we don't have that anymore, there's no purpose for the brackets anymore. So now I can start start over with Bodmans and I'm, uh, or sand up Bodmans backwards. Am I subtracting anything? No. Am I adding anything? Yes, I'm adding a plus one. So subtracting a one on both sides leaves me with the following that my interest is equal to the square root of 60,000 divided by 50,000 not square root, sorry, the 60th root minus one. And I solve that in my calculator. Okay, I get 
to do is keep it in the bracket. This is what my calculator knows how to do. Okay, 16, 1, 2, 3, divided by 15, 1, 2, 3. I want this thing's y root that has an expo uh, power of 60, or an index of 60, minus 1 is equal to 0, 0, 0,03 so i is equal to 0, 0, 0, 0,003 now that, if I multiply that with 100 it gives me 0, 0,3% man, that is little is that how much interest I am getting um, per annum? No, no, no. Remember, we've been working with months. That 60 represented months. I got it 60 times in five years, which means I, I was counting the months I'm, I was getting it. So, in other words, my annual interest, and you will learn a little bit later, annual interest. This annual interest, this this interest is called the nominal interest. My nominal interest is therefore 0, 0,3 times 12, which gives me 3,6% per annum. Okay, and as I said, this is called nominal interest. We get another interest called effective interest. Nominal interest. Okay, and we'll look at effective interest in a little while. But for now, nominal interest, that's the nominal interest rate. And uh, let's just see how I can look at this formula and see if I can derive, get to the same formula if I just use no values. So A is equal to P1 plus I to the power of A. I will solve I, which means P is in front of the bracket. Let's get a rid of him first. I'm doing what knows backwards. I'm going to save you some time. Go through it slowly yourself if you if, if I'm losing it. So I get one plus I power of n is equal to a over p. Okay, now let's get rid of the exponent of n. Well, not rid, just one. We want to uh, divide the exponent to be one, so that I want I uh, take the nth root. Again, keep the balance, we take the nth root of both sides. And then we have left 1 plus i, we're going rid of the brackets because their purpose was for multiply it, for the exponent and multiplying with p. So all I have left now is to subtract the 1 on either side. And that leaves me with a formula of hmm, colors nice. Let's choose uh, magenta. I is equal to the nth root of a over p minus one. That would give me my interest that I earn the interest rate. I would earn every time I earn interest. Not per month, not per year. It depends on what I am I calculating, over what time period am I working. And you'll see that's what we have here. Okay, so either way, whether you try and solve that formula, that's exactly what we have there. Ken A P minus one. Okay. Hope you understood and you didn't find it too difficult. And I hope it's helpful when you do your next questions.